We got our Coke. Let's get it, guys. Welcome back to Everyday Minimalist. My name is Brandon and today we are looking at the CJRB Feldspar. Guys, I have a lot to say about this knife. It is fantastic for the price. Now it's only about $35 to $40 depending on when you grab it. I got mine off of Amazon and it was a fantastic purchase. I just wanted to get like a budget knife on hand and then just put it through its paces in that sense. And man, do I have a lot to say about this little knife. But first off, let's go ahead and get into the specifications. The overall length, you're looking at about seven inches. The blade length, you're looking at about three inches. The close length, you're looking at about four inches. So this is gonna be a relatively smaller knife and it weighs about 2.7 ounces. So it's not really that heavy for its size. Looking at the blade itself, this thing is made of D2 steel. So this is a really good contender um, against like the Civivi Elementum, if we're looking at the Ontario Rat 2 and those sort of knives. D2 blade steel is fantastic and especially at that $35 price range, you can't really beat that. So it is going to have a drop point blade with a flat grind and a stone wash finish. This is a fantastic shape in my opinion. It's probably my second favorite next to the Tanto style blade. The version that we did get is going to be the Jade G10 finish. When companies put a lot of texture on their scales, I don't really enjoy that. You know, it kind of catches on my pocket and it's not enjoyable in that sense. This guy is going to be bearing operated and it is a liner lock. I've actually been enjoying a lot of liner locks recently just because of the ease of closing. As you can tell, it is going to also have thumb studs for the deployment method. And you can spidey flick it if you want to, or you can just open it up with the thumb flip. With the handles, you'll notice that there is going to be a really good deep carry pocket clip that is going to be reversible for ambidextrous use. And then right next to that, you will have a paracord hole. And honestly, I think if they left that paracord hole out, it would just be a little bit more of a sleek design, a more minimal design in that sense. Yeah, guys, um, this knife has been really fantastic to use. Now that we've got these specifications put away, let's talk about the negative and positives coming from this knife, starting with the negatives. So when I first got this knife, I actually did not adjust the pivot at all. The blade centering is not on point. As you can tell, it's gonna be veering over to the right-hand side quite a bit more. Yeah, that's just what you're gonna get for for a $35 knife, it's actually not that bad. If you do some tuning, I don't think you're gonna have any issues with that. The next thing would be this finger choil up front. It's really tight and small. I wish they gave it a little bit more room. I mean, I guess you can call that a sharpening choil, but I feel like if I were to kind of make a slip, that would definitely cut my finger. That's kind of a gripe, but again, that's not that huge of a deal. You can just choke up a little bit differently with this on your grip. Ergonomically speaking, that would be another negative. The pocket clip is pretty ginormous. <laughs> I do have a kind of like a hot spot here on the palm of my hand hitting that pocket clip and that's kind of unenjoyable. But again, guys, it's a $35 knife. If you are in the market to spend 35 bucks on a budget knife, I think this is probably gonna be the best one that you can find at the moment. So now that we've got the negatives put away, let's talk about the positives. The actual design of this guy it is going to be very round and non-threatening. You can pass this over to a colleague and if they're trying to open up a box, they're not gonna be scared of this thing. Next up would be the action of this knife. So again, guys, it is gonna be ball bearing operated. It is just fantastic, super snappy. It doesn't take a lot of force to get that knife deployed. And even if you try to, the detent is actually pretty decent with this little guy. I've been carrying it for about a week and a half now and every single moment that I can use it, it's kind of there to be the beater knife. To give you guys an example, I was actually cutting up some of my girlfriend's cacao. Now, if you guys don't know what cacao is, it's basically like as raw as you can get with chocolate. It's super, super robust and stiff. It almost felt like a brick in that sense, um, a brick of wood. And I was cutting through the entire brick. I haven't sharpened it once. It still retains a really good edge. I absolutely love how well Artisan Cutlery or CJRB 
made this knife. So I actually passed this over to one of my friends and uh, asked them like, hey, how much do you think this knife is worth? And he said that he thought it was like in the $200 range. Cause I guess he's used to me just carrying, you know, like bench made knives, Microtech knives and like the higher end stuff. And he thought it was a part of that. Now um, that's kind of surprising, especially with him like kind of fidgeting around with the knife itself and then kind of feeling everything. Now he doesn't know a ton about blade steels and stuff like that, but even then, if this can fool someone that you have like a $200 knife, that's crazy in my opinion. In terms of the price, guys, again, like I said in the beginning of the video, $35 is gonna get you a pretty fantastic knife. It's gonna be a great gift for maybe your friends or colleagues, people that aren't into knives, but you wanna get them into the hobby. This is probably gonna be your guy. This or the Elementum. For right now, I think this actually beats out the Elementum because of its price range. It's just really budget friendly and you get a lot out of that 35 bucks that you're spending. Um, like, don't get me wrong, the Civivi Elementum is awesome, but you are gonna be spending, you Know, 15 bucks more to get the Elementum versus the CJRB Feldspar. There is going to be a three and a half inch version. I think those are like around 40 bucks. And then the small version fits my EDC tasks perfectly. So my conclusion with this knife is if you are looking to spend, you know, lesser than like $50 or 35 bucks, go ahead and pick this up. You will not regret it. If you're looking for a knife to gift someone, this thing is awesome. If you want something that's just gonna be fidget friendly and just like a beater around the house, this thing is perfect. This might take my budget knife of the year for 2020. Of course, we're gonna get more knives in and see what it's all about, but so far, this is kind of taking the cake. So there you guys have it, the CJRB Feldspar. Before I let you guys go, I wanted to give you guys a little sneak peek of the Viper Catla. This is a Voxnez design. Holy crap, guys. I am so surprised with this knife. I'm gonna give it a little bit more pocket time before I do post up a review video, but this thing is super underrated. Um, it's got a Tonto style blade and it's kind of weird. It's got micarta scales and the pocket clip is just to die for. This is probably my favorite pocket clip on any knife. This thing is going to be a beast. I just wanna let you guys know that I am carrying it and I will show you guys the most underrated knife for 2020. Besides that guys, thank you so much for dropping by. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Go get yourself a Feldspar. I will leave a link in the description below so you guys can go pick it up. If you guys enjoyed this content, go ahead, hit that subscribe button, ring that bell icon so you know when that next video is live. And I guess we'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.